Hello and welcome to the Large and Unnecessary First Player Token Podcast. This is episode 50 and my name is Chris. I'm Ewan. I'm Pavel. And I'm David. Yeah, we've got Dave back yet again for another uh, uh, fantastic board games episode. Back by popular demand. <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. Who demanded him? Uh, we did. Oh, did we? All right. Get over here. <laughs> we've got the, we're the popular vote. <laughs> yeah. oh. Well, uh, we this episode 50 50 episodes boys big landmark episode we did it Dave you did it you made it to 50 <laughs> episodes know, yeah. I know you slipped in there <laughs> at 50 I'm getting all emotional oh. are you? yeah, yeah. you've yeah. not been here for 50 episodes so me and Ewan we've been here the ah, whole we've time we've been slogging away for 50 episodes we've that's s- why we can't even feel excitement over yeah. it <laughs> we've seen some shit Pavel we've- we so are you, are you saying I'm a, I'm a secondary citizen here? Is that what <laughs> yeah. you're saying? Yes. Well, once you get to, what episode did you join us in? Uh, I don't know like third yeah, I think no. I think you did a you, you did a segment like, for us. You're starting to sound like the Home Office there. Yeah. <laughs> what did, what year did you come in? There we go. I'm sorry, I'll go home now. <laughs> we did it. We got political again. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> no, seriously, what episode did you join us in? Um, uh, I want to be a British citizen, please. <laughs> But which episode, though? I want to be a podcast citizen. <laughs> you know the government are listening to this. Yes, I'm assuming uh, so. That's the only reason anybody makes podcasts is just a snitch to the government. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is not a politics episode or an yes, episode about is. trying to throw Pavel out of the country. Uh, this is about gaming, so we're going to talk about a couple of board games, at least. Yeah. Um, this may be a shorter episode than normal, despite it being episode 50. Usually it's the other way round when you hit a landmark episode. No, you do a bumper we, length. We come to you physically and emotionally drained, yes. and just with <laughs> having played maybe a handful of board games. I feel refreshed, actually, <laughs> after what we've just played. I don't know about you guys, but I just feel energised. You energized. You still, you've still got that energy hmm. like hmm. pumping through you there. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see it. The I can raw see adrenaline. It. Yeah. <laughs> So we just sat and played this afternoon, a game that we have not played for a few years. Now, me and Ewan played it uh, a few years back with somebody else, and we thought, you know what, we've not played this in a while, so let's introduce it to Pavel, who gets excited about seeing rabbits, to be honest. Uh, so this game just kind of sent him over the edge, um, because no, I'm just I'm just saying that Pavel is very easily excited. Oh, right, okay. okay yeah. I'm not saying that there's that any rabbits in this game. Sure I'll take no, it as a compliment. Yeah, you're a very excitable man. Uh, uh, thank you, thank um, you. And Dave, if you're you... not getting excited by stuff, then you're just wasting air, is what I think you <laughs> I'm sure you said that in the last episode uh, as well. Ah, okay. Yeah, my memory is yeah. very short. Permanent state of excitement. Mm. Mm. But presumably if you're more excited, you're going to actually take in more oxygen, so you're going to be consuming Yeah, more. but you're using it the right way. Oh, fair enough. You're either awesome, or you shouldn't really be. I just... I'm... <laughs> I'm concerned about you using up all of our oxygen supplies. There we go. Again, I'm, I'm stealing jobs. I'm stealing <laughs> oxygen. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. You've not quite reached the age of being an oxygen thief. <laughs> oh, you're, we're being ageist now. Uh, That's even we're better. Ageist now, yeah. We're adding it to the collection. That's fine. Well, really, there isn't any sort of demographic that we don't want to alienate. All right, let's yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Shall we talk about uh, maybe Alien Encounter then? It's an, not an alien. Alien, it's not alien encounters. That's, that's a different game. All right, it's a game though. I'm pretty sure that is a game. Well, cosmic encounters, I think. Cos- I'm pretty yeah. sure Alien Encounter is one as well. Oh, and Mage Quest. And as Mage well. Quest. Yes, Mage yes, Quest. Of course, the, the, yes. the, the greatest game ever made. <clears throat> uh, see a previous episode for a reference to that. Thanks, Dave. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just having a game of Mage Quest. Dave's main contribution to the podcast so far <laughs> was a fictional, non-existing game. <laughs> yeah, but it is. The best game ever made. It is. Well, yeah. It's got everything. Absolutely. We should do a review of that. It's, I, well, I was, I was going to suggest that at some point we do an episode where we just talk about Mage Quest. Yeah, yeah. I think we it, should. It has everything. Yeah, well, and you want to delve into the history of it and the sort of the sordid stories behind its creation. Yeah. Oh, it's like, like it's like reading would, a Led Zeppelin biography. <laughs> that would have been that would have been the sort of thing that would have been really good for a kind of landmark episode. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. 
that, I mean, to wait till episode 100. That's true, yeah. We could say technically this is episode 51 because we did do an episode zero for some reason. Well, we've done a bunch of and we've done some episodes. We've if done some random to, episodes. If you're going to go numerically, we've already hit 50. Yeah. So it's just a, a normal mundane episode in which we don't talk about games much because why would we? <laughs> okay. Are we, are we riling up Pavel? I think we're riling him <laughs> oh, a little no. bit. Anyway, let's get to this game in hand. So we're talking about a game called Space Alert. Um, which, by the way, right, I thought it was old, but I didn't realise it was this old. It came out in 2008, so that's almost 10 years ago. Oh. Um, and this is by Vlada Khvatel. I don't know how you pronounce that name. Vlada Khvatel. I'm sure, Pavel, you tried to lecture me on how to pronounce this before. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Am I close enough? You C+. Plus. You, you do it, you do it. You do it. Well, Vlada Khvatel. That's... That's not that's not his name. <laughs> You've got that so wrong, <laughs> right? But he's done some brilliant games. He's one of my favourite designers. Um, he did Through the Ages. Uh, he did Dungeon Lords, which I love. He also did Code Names. Yeah. Um, he's got a weird variety he's of very games. Diverse. Like, yeah, very diverse. Right, um, he's also done like things like Galaxy Trucker um, and some other things that I can't actually think of at the moment. Uh, but this Space Alert. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's in the vein of the... I mean, we've talked about a couple of these games in the past. Uh, quite recently, I think, we, we talked about Damage Report. Um, and... Yes. What's the other one? Spill Out... Uh, Space Cadets? Space Cadets. Which isn't quite... This, there's a bit more nuance well, to Space Cadet. But the, the general got... theme of... You're in a spaceship, and you yes. have to stop it from blowing up, and somehow just make it all work. Yeah. And that's very difficult. And this... Yeah, this one takes it... To a, a whole new level, I think, <laughs> and it, it it does, and it's. Uh, I mean, you know, you're in for a ride when uh, there's basically like seven or eight tutorial missions, um, <laughs> and each tu- each mission kind of adds on another layer to the game. Um, so we sat and played through. I mean, how many missions did we just play? About five or six. Five or six. Yeah, five or six. Yeah. And we did get to the playing a full mission. Yeah. Eventually, which is the first time we've done it. I think I mean, it is. We'd, I we'd, think it is. We'd sort of lingered on the tutorials previously because we were so terrified of the game. I think. <laughs> yeah, t- t- terrified is a good word. I actually felt intimidated by, the, by this game, and every single time we've survived a mission, I thought we can't possibly survive again, especially when you rank up difficulty, and and we we have. We have. I'm, we ranked it up quite fast as well. Uh, we basically uh, skipped a few of the simulation missions and just went straight into full yeah. full mission because we're that good. Well, the, the, the game gives you you get because you do get there's basically we went through all the stages of the simulation or the, or the tutorial stuff, but there's optional like additional missions at each stage you can do. I think yeah. just to kind of get you into the swing of things. But we went not. We're just going to go. We're going to go straight, straight to it. on. It has nothing to do with the fact that Pavel has to go home soon. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's maybe let's maybe try and introduce the actual mechanics because okay, so- they not they they. Strange. This is a. Um, how do you describe this? It's in that sort of same vein as Robo Rally in the terms of like you program your moves. Yeah. Okay, so that's the main mechanic in this game. So there are, the, the game is kind of separated into two phases. You've got a timed phase and you have the resolution phase. And during the timed phase, you've got, oh, you got a little CD with the game. You got a couple of little CDs. Uh, one of them's for the tutorials and stuff, and then one disc for the actual full missions. And all that CD is doing is basically telling you when certain things happen during the game. And we'll get into more detail about that in a minute. So you start the CD and you basically have a hand of cards which have various actions on them. Uh, and you are programming your moves as as one person on the ship. So each person, each player is one person on this ship. So you can move left, you can move right, you can move below deck or up, above deck. Um, and you can press various buttons. And that's about it. I mean, that's the kind of... That's that's all you really need to play this game. That's also my understanding of the actual work on a spaceship. Oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah. buttons and there's various rooms. I don't know what NASA is all about, really. <laughs> it's simple. This yeah. game has proven it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the the board is split. It's it's a picture of a spaceship. Basically, it's a diagram of a, the spaceship you're in, and it's split into six different sections. So you've got you've got your port side and your starboard side and your center, and. Uh, they're colour coded as well to make things much easier so you're not saying port and starboard and getting confused and they do make jokes about that in the rule book um, plenty of confusion in this game you don't really need yeah. any extra exactly so they simplify that for you um, sorry but blue and red basically yeah it's blue red and white or oh, white yeah. Yeah. yeah white for the centre blue and red for either side <laughs> uh, so in each side you've got above deck and below deck yeah, so you, you program your moves, you can move between, you can press the various buttons that are in each uh, room in the ship, 
Uh, now the buttons do different things depending on which room yeah. you're in. So each room has three functions. Yeah. It has three functions, right. yeah. So there's A, B, and C buttons, and you have cards in your hand that are A, B, or C. And if you play one of those, that means that you're pressing that corresponding button. Um, if you are above the deck and you're pressing A, generally you're firing the guns, the lasers that are in the, the ship. If you're below the deck, the, those also fire guns in the left and right section. Uh, they fire little lasers. And in the bottom section, there's a plasma cannon, um, uh, can... which can hit everything, but it does low amounts of damage. Yeah. And if you're pressing the B button, if you're above deck, you're charging the shields. If you're below deck, you're charging the reactors. Now, that's important, uh, because the reactors, those create the energy that you need yeah. to actually fire the guns and charge the shields above the deck. And uh, any time you hit the button to fire the laser or charge the shields, it's just drawing energy draw directly energy. from those. So, so if you're good at tactics, you do your conveyor belts of somebody in the bottom middle section uh, charging up the main reactor, people in the bottom left and right section siphoning that energy, people in the um, upper left and right and middle sections using that energy and stuff like that. Indeed. So it's all about cooperation. Indeed. Which no. we do brilliantly. No, oh, we, we nailed it on maybe one of the <laughs> missions. <laughs> Now, there's also the C buttons. Now, when you're playing the sort of tutorial missions, those generally don't come into it. Yeah. Um, so you just kind of skip those. Uh, but the C buttons will do things like they'll activate battle bots. Um, the, there's a computer on the bridge that you, you just have to press the C button every so often to make sure nothing goes wrong. Which is exactly what I do at work for a living. I'm an <laughs> IT support. All I do is really do that. Press a button, nothing goes wrong, go home. Um, and the bottom deck, what does the C buttons do there? Yes, you can Fire look, missiles. You can look through the window. You can look through the window. To achieve nothing. And <laughs> <laughs> um, the top left, the C button, I think, fires interceptors, doesn't it? So you can shoot out little ships yeah. if you've got battle bots with and you. you have battle bots on the, um, the But that comes there. later on. Yeah. Wait, which is a good thing, because that game can really overwhelm you, even though it yes. seems like a simple concept. Uh, you're, you're constantly rushed... And you have to think for yourself, try to communicate with everybody around and come up with a coherent tactic, which is much more difficult <laughs> than you think. <laughs> so yeah, so the game starts off, like when you, you do the first tutorial missions, you just skip all the C stuff, you just basically have to, and it's a preset thing as well, so you know exactly what's coming out and when it's coming out, pretty much. It's the same every time when you're playing those simple tutorial where to play the game missions. And all you can really do is fire the guns and charge the shields and charge the reactors. Those are the only things you can really do. And as you go through the missions, they'll add an extra layer on. So they'll add in um, the C button yeah. functions as you go through. We won't add them all in at once. It'll let you learn how to use each of these things as you're playing through. Yeah. Um, but the whole thing about this is the fact that the, the timed section of the game um, so that's when you're programming, mm. and the CD that comes with the with the game, like I say, tells you when certain things happen. So threats will turn up, and you'll get a computerized voice as when you you start the CD, you start playing, you can start programming at that point. There's generally not much you can do until you know what threats are coming. Yeah. So you've got a deck, you've got a couple of decks, you've got external threats, you've got internal threats. Again, the internal threats they add in later on. Um, Generally, I think when you're pretty much ready for the full missions, it adds those in. Yeah, because uh, previously you thought that you eliminate threats by firing very kinds of weaponry, <laughs> and, and suddenly you realise that there is uh, there is internal threats, and in each of those you actually have to deal with via different means. Yes. Yeah. So it's just complexity upon complexity. And as you go so on, as well, you have like the external threats have other well, the sort of the approaching ships or whatever like that have various weird abilities yes. that they don't have in earlier parts of the game. Well, that's it. They will so, approach at different speeds and have different actions, uh, which are also pretty much randomised if you play a full mission. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is that they come in and target specific parts of the ship generally as well. So they'll, there's trajectory things on the table, and when you draw a threat, the, the computerised voice in the CD will say, you know, threat coming in T-3 or T-3, whatever it is, um, and it's targeting the red section. So you've got to draw a card in the red section, and then you put the, if it's if it's T plus three, you put a three counter on it to say that. When it comes to the resolution step, in the third phase of the resolution step, this thing turns up. So you then have to plan for that. So your board is split, your uh, programming board with your cards is split into, not, well, in the t tutorials it's one to seven. 
Mm. Um, it nearly doubles that in the full game. It goes up to 12. Um, and you will be programming things. So you'll say, right, okay, in phase one of the resolution step, this is what I want to do. In phase two, this is what I want to do. So I might want to move right, uh, and then I might want to fire the lasers in phase two, and then I might want to wait and do nothing in phase three, and then in phase four, I might want to charge the shields because this this threat that's coming in at T plus three, you can figure out when it's going to shoot you. Um, so you can say, right, okay, we need the shields up at that point. Yeah. And that sounds like just like a little puzzle. It sounds a bit puzzly, yeah, like, oh, that could be simple and easy to figure out. No. <laughs> no. Because there's so many factors to yes. consider. <laughs> so many. Honestly, in cooperative games, you usually worry about three or four things, whereas in here, yeah. oh, you have to worry about, like, 15 of those. Well, I mean, given unlimited time and just being able to discuss it with each other, yeah, you could just program out the perfect thing. Count everything but out. The, yeah. the time fit really does, like, it... It feels you, you much get, shorter than feel, it actually you is. You get really flustered really easily, and it's quite easy to just miss things. I mean, I, I I think Dave did it as well in the last round, and I did it on an earlier one where we just end up, it got to the thing, I hadn't put any cards down. Yeah. And I just... Because I, I, you had no idea what to do. Yeah. It was like... Because when you're playing this as, as a cooperative game with other people, you really have to try and work together. But... That means that you really do have to communicate with each other, but it's so easy to just get lost in what everybody's doing, especially you're trying to keep track of what you're doing and what three other people are doing at the same time. Yeah. So you're, you're sitting there going, okay, in turn eight, I'm going to fire these lasers. And so then Pavel shouts at me, I'm firing those lasers in turn eight. And you go, oh, God, well, where am I going to go now? <laughs> so yeah. I'm kind of stuck here. Uh, should I move across that way? Or oh, no, I can't because there's a, there's like something there I can't do. So And then know. suddenly another threat appears. And then after another threat appears, aye. And then you're <laughs> like, oh, God, now we've got to go and deal with this. So let's go back a bit and restructure what we're going to do here. How long is the actual time to... Um phase um so it's one it's one minute for every phase that you play so it's basically in the tutorial missions the time time phase is seven minutes long because there's seven phases in the resolution thing right um so in the full game it's 12 minutes 12 12 phases right yeah this just drove it drives you insane this game doesn't it (laughs) and it's a lot of fun it's a hell of a lot of fun don't get me wrong right that's the thing i don't think we were that frustrated because we've played it a number of times if we actually got annoyed at this game we would have stopped we, no, we had good fun. Yeah, we kept going with it, yeah, because it's, yeah, it's as stressful as it is. It is quite amusing to see it all play out. You go through the time phase, and then you go through all your resolution, and yeah, just seeing how badly wrong you've got it is, uh, is entertaining <laughs> in itself. It is entertaining, yeah. Well, we may have stopped earlier if we weren't just winning all the time, because we just kept succeeding somehow. I don't know how we did it in that last mission. If I, let, let's go, but let's go talk through our career as a, as like space cadets here. Yeah. Um. So we started off with a, you know, the 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 rule book in this for this game is pretty good. Like the flavor text in it is really funny. Yeah. Um. It's it's all sort of like, it's it's done in a way, and I think Vlada Fatal like likes to do these kind of things with his rule book. He does something similar with Dungeon Lords as well, where it's basically like some like it's some sort of character in this world that's talking to you rather than just like dryly teaching you the rules. Mm. Um, and it's basically you you're being talked to by this you know I don't know some trainer guy for this the space. Um, I don't know Space Academy. Yeah, they, uh, I don't know. it sounded like you were playing them as the like the Monopoly Man. Oh yeah, well I, I, I do like I do like to do when you when you have a position running. of authority, you have to put on that. Uh, Hello, chaps. <laughs> I've got a spaceship here. <laughs> yes, you have a spaceship here. Just fire the guns; it'll be okay. <laughs> and, and that's that's kind of what the rule book's like. The, the rule book is like it's got this. <laughs> Like the guy's trying to hide the fact that nobody comes back from these missions alive. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the captain. How can I be exploiting you? I'm a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So it's um, great reading. So our first mission, which is supposed to be just a simulation, you know, in in the academy, you're not actually out in a ship, um, and it teaches you the very, very basics of the game, and we failed so hard. It couldn't yeah. have been easier, and it was a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I know? I'm trying to remember if that happened the first time we played. I feel like that happened the first time we played. I think it's almost think it set did. up for that to happen. I think it is. I think you really have to totally understand what's going on yeah. in order to figure out what you're doing. I mean, you also have to have the right cards for it as well, I suppose, because the game does have a thing where you only have five cards to play in the. You have a choice of five cards to play in the first three yeah. uh, phases, basically, and then the computerized voice tells you the second phase starts and that locks in the cards you've played and you can pick up the, the next year another five cards, basically, and you can play those in the next few spaces. So, yeah, you do kind of have to have the right cards in order to do well in a mission. 
there has been a, there was a few of those missions where I found myself with cards that were completely useless. I couldn't really move anywhere. I couldn't. There's no point in me pressing like trying to put the shields up because somebody's already fully charging them or whatever. Uh, so you do. There is a, a little random chance thing going on there. I was thinking, I mean, I kind of settled into a role of, <clears throat> for most of the game where I was like doing the same thing every time we did a mission. Was yeah, you were the you know, engineer. The computer. Yeah, I was basically engineering. Go down, charging up the <laughs> in the various engines or whatever. No, and then it got to the last one where just suddenly I had I couldn't do any of that stuff and I didn't know what to do with myself. I ended up wandering yeah. around the ship aimlessly for a good like four <laughs> turns. The thing is, if you if you assign roles and we've assigned you in the role of we voted for Ewan and he was indeed made the captain. Chris was the uh, uh, communications, com- communications officer. officer, and Dave became the was it logistics. I can't remember. Tactical. Tactical officer, and I was I was the deck and I was cleaning the toilets. Uh, um, and at, at some point, they've they've I've I've actually been promoted to a chief security officer, which I think I excelled at. Um, and um, well, we, 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 we can debate that. <laughs> and 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 this also gives you a fixed. Um, uh, turn order or phase order, I should say, where Ewan would always act first, Chris second, Dave third. I was always the last one, which that's fine. That's I'm not I'm not taking it personally at all. Um, which means that uh, we got used to a certain um, duties, I would say, because yeah. you cannot do some some things in this game if you don't have the energy uh, for it. So some people would naturally either take care of certain maintenance or for preparation work so that we're combat ready. Well, yeah, so it made sense for you to go to become the engineer, basically, well, the de facto engineer, mm. because you always acted first in each phase. So when it comes to the resolution s- step of the game, um, there's a specific order that you do things. Um, and the first one is that you always see which threats turn up. So any when it comes to phase one, any threats that turned up at T plus one will then appear. And then we would do our action cards for that phase. So Ewan would turn over his card and he would do his first. I was next in line, so I'd turn over mine, do his, uh, do, his do mine. Dave would then go next, and then Pavel. Um, and then the enemies would the uh, sorry we would then determine what damage we'd done to the enemies if we'd fired any guns or whatever then we would do that and then the enemies would then move further down their trajectory towards us and if they hit certain points on that trajectory they do some of their special abilities and then you would go into phase two and you would do all that all over again so it was quite important for you and yeah to be down charging the energy reactors up because if you went down charged up a reactor and i had that turn decided to charge up the shields in the sector above it that meant that there was energy available for me to do it. So you and becoming the engineer was kind of a, a sensible move. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I think figuring that out really helped us. Because as soon as we've realised that we can we can uh, pretty much just divide uh, duties depending on who acts when, meant that you guys sort of acted as well. Let's say in the in the early stages of any mission, you guys would act as a pair. We would uh, Dave and myself would take uh, as the player third and four, fourth uh, a different threat um, and and try to tackle that. And then things would get mixed up depending on what what additional threats would pop up. Or at least this was how we were trying to do it. Yeah. Mostly because it's easier to communicate with one person and then maybe just double check with others whether they're not, uh, you know, in your way than trying to actually discuss tactics with uh, between the four of us. Because yeah. that's the thing, you can kind of sit and have a general plan beforehand, but you're not going to know what cards each one's going to have or what threats yeah. are going to come out. So it's, it's very kind of rough. Sketch. But a loose plan's better than no plan. But yeah, yeah. And it, it did kind of work, work out for the us. kind of things you need because, to do. Because, I mean, we saw that, like, if we go back to uh, just, like, sort of going through the missions as we yeah. played them, um, that first, that very first mission, which we failed so badly at, was because we were all just kind of running about like headless chickens, just being like, what do we do here? Like, <laughs> should, should I fire this? Should, is there any energy for that? I just don't know. Yeah, we kept firing empty dry oh, lasers yeah. or well, um, charging up full Let's be honest, generators. Pavel, you just ran around, you ran into every room you could get to and just Pressing pressed the, the button to fire the, the weapons. Whilst screaming. Like, yeah, while yeah. screaming. <laughs> yes. You got very excited. I'm sorry, but the, the, the very idea of pressing buttons to shoot lasers at incoming crap is just amazing. <laughs> very <laughs> simple button pressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was never approved of the trigger system. <laughs> <laughs> but then we moved on to the second mission, so we failed quite badly at that first mission, and part of the reason for that was because we didn't fully 
uh, recognise the threat of that pulse ball thing, which basically hit every part of the ship. Yeah. And if you take more than six damage in any one part of the ship, the ship blows up and you lose. Um, and that pulse ball was doing hitting every part of the ship for small amounts of damage, but because the other threats were hitting parts of the ship as well, that pulse ball kind of just ruined everything. If we yeah. got rid of the pulse ball, we were, probably would have survived. Um, but sometimes, anyway, sometimes it's just a small thing, like yeah, yeah. oh, it can be yeah, just one small thing, and that's it. Because I was, I was actually a shot. I'm, I'm gonna shoot it into pieces, but it uh, turned out that just one <laughs> tiny bit didn't work out. There was no energy in the gun, or something like this. Yeah, well, that's part of the thing is getting the timing right for using the weapons. I mean, we, yes, we did, we did it a couple of times, but it's it's a big thing with because there's quite a lot of there's a lot of weapons you can use, but they're some of them are quite underpowered, like use the like the plasma rifle one that hits everything, but only hits for one. So it's, and most things have a shield. Yeah. Uh, they have at least one or it's gonna be more than that. So really it's not much use unless you've got other weapons firing in that turn, because anything that's fired in the one phase all sort of gets added together basically. But the um So we have, did, yeah. you have to synchronise yeah. the shooters. Synchronise knowing guns, that everybody's yes. gonna be Definitely firing helps. the lasers at a specific on a specific turn is a really big thing basically yeah. Yeah. coordinate energy for guns synchronize shooters and pretty much do all shooters. the random stuff <clears throat> it sounds simple but because it's timed it's yeah. just brilliant and, and you know even in the full game 12 minutes isn't a lot of time no it's not a lot of time to get a, mm. <laughs> a plan together <laughs> um, now we did quite well in the next couple of missions after that um, so much so that we decided to just skip to the full mission um, and the full mission is kind of where uh, you've got everything on the board. So everything's available to be used. So you've got battle bots that you can pick up to go and deal with internal threats that turn up. So like if you have, basically your ship can get boarded um, and you can use these battle bots to go and fight them. Or you can go and chuck the battle bots in the interceptors and send them out into space to go and shoot some of the, the and It's a complicated threats. mechanic with the battle bots. It's a weird one, but yeah. it works. It seems to work, unless Pavel's trying to do anything with them. <clears throat> um, well, we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> uh, what else is available there? Um, oh yeah, sorry, it's the malfunctions. That's what. That's what malfunctions and, and, and the malfunctions damage be... uh, rules as well, because uh, you're not just getting damage to your internal structure anymore. Every yes. every single piece of uh, well point of damage is essentially uh, some lost functionality. So that really can ruin just about any plan. Yeah. Because this game is all about, about very quick thinking and communication and mathematics, just planning. And you think you've planned everything well and you're taking maybe some damage into consideration and that, that single point of damage can just suddenly ruin everything. Indeed. Mm. So we started off this full mission full of like, like really positively because we'd, we'd, <laughs> we'd done, done so well. well in the last few missions. Um so we went in here really positively and we sat and we came up with a plan the threats came out, some of them were looking particularly bad, we had two internal threats which were like two groups, two separate groups of skirmishers had boarded the ship so we needed to get the battle bots ready and we had what, a leviathan massive ship turning up late That's on in the game yeah. um, we had, what was it, a cryo frigate or something like that it turned up in another part that was like, going to attack the ship three huge and, spaceships and two teams yeah, another of, big spaceship, two uh, teams of borders, of borders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, things were looking a bit rough but then we, came, we, we did start to come together with a plan I was going to go and grab the battle bots I had a special ability card on me you, you get special ability cards in the full mission, but they're just basically slightly better versions of the normal action cards, and you get one each. Um, and it was a it was a very good plan. It was so a my, very good plan. My plan to to take care of the borders. Uh, I I just I just realised yes, you should do it. I'll let you do it. Yes, and then you didn't. I, I'm, I was quite assured I did until so, you start going through the resolution phase. You start uncovering yes. your cards, and then you realise, oh, you've actually not not changed so, your tactics. So my, my, my plan phase. was that on my first turn, I was uh, charging the shields in the bridge area, and then my second turn, I was moving over to the room where the battle bots were, and then my third turn, I was picking the battle bots up, and then the fourth turn, I was moving back into the bridge, and then spending the next couple of turns fighting the skirmishers. It was an excellent plan. It I like it. Plan. I like it even now. Pavel said, okay, I was going to get the battle bots, but I won't do that anymore. So Pavel's first turn, he moves into the room where the battle bots are, and in his second turn, he picks up the battle bots. So now, I've activated the battle bots thinking, yeah, they look cool. You can't have... Once a battle bot in a room is active, you can't pick them up yourself. So I walked into the room my third turn... My Fair. second turn, sorry, to find that Pavel had already taken the battle bots, despite saying he wouldn't. 
<laughs> this is this is pretty much what happens. Then for the rest of the game, you keep this absolutely useless uh, team of uh, <clears throat> battle bo bots that can defend you from from the boarding party simply because you've not planned for them to be used. <laughs> so they just stood there with me as I pumped all the energy into shields, looking into the face of death as two massive spaceships were flying towards us. And all I could do, I maybe shot once or twice, but. All I could do is really just pump energy into shields, and there was some praying done as well. There was there was prayers, yes. Yes. So I then spent the next few turns doing useless things because I'd <laughs> set up my card so that I moved back into the bridge and tried to fight the skirmishers with the battle bots. So you were commanding them, and nobody bots. was responding to your commands. Yeah, that I was, was just like, shoot these guys, robots. <laughs> nope. Robots. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so basically, like my next like six turns or something were useless. But you did push the computer button. I did push the computer so button. That's quite that's quite important. So me. you have to push the computer button in the bridge, um, at, and you have to do it in the first and first or second phase, and then the is it the third or fourth, fourth or fifth, and then again in the seventh or eighth. You always have to. Somebody has to get to the bridge and push the computer button, otherwise... IT support is vital, yeah, th yes. Things things can go downhill if you don't do that. Mm. Um, but yeah, somehow, we had these three massive ships coming at us. We had two boarding parties that basically destroyed the centre section of the ship we to also, the point where if it took one more hit, we were dead. We also had had Ian, uh, because during during all the discussions that we were preparing, we got slightly overwhelmed by variety and probably sheer size of enemies. And I don't think Ian, you've, you've managed to populate your, your third uh, set of actions, have you? Or was it in the previous mission? No, that was in the pre previous, no, previous mission. Set, Sorry. Um, right. Yeah, it ran out of time. Yeah. Because there was just too like, much... Oh, it's the end. I was like... Well, I haven't put anything down. I haven't even but, thought about but it. But we didn't know what we were doing anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know what? As much as so, this... Yeah. So sorry. No, I just, I just want to go through this mission still. Mm. Okay, so... I'm proud of it. So yeah, the, this, the skirmishers like nearly destroyed the, the ship. Okay, so they left it completely severely wounded. The big massive ships came in. Somehow we managed to... I think we took another six damage in that side, Dave? Yes, we did. Yeah, that's right on the... Uh... Starboard side, I believe. It was uh, the blue another, side. Another... <laughs> Let's not get technical. <laughs> Is that the starboard? Was it the starboard? Uh, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one says which. <laughs> Imagine yeah. not knowing that. <laughs> we, we played a lot of Black Wakes. So. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you need to know that. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of uh, random chance because we. I think it was Ewan that just randomly launched some missiles. Well, <laughs> the, I, I reasoned the that, that, that on, you know, not knowing what to do with my last four turns, I might as well fire off all the rockets I can and then sit firing the lasers. And that seemed to work. It did seem to work. I mean, because there wasn't, like, we have three big massive lasers at the hmm. front of the ship. I think we fired one of them once and it healed the damage from that anyway. Yeah, yeah, one of the, sh uh, and then, the enemy like, ship's Chris, ability. Yeah, Chris was trying to fire the the lasers at the latter part of the game, but of course there was uh, there was no energy and was, nothing left. There to was shoot. damage. There was, nothing, there was yeah. nothing to shoot at. <laughs> but that's because Ewan had fired those rockets, though. Yes. So Ewan just on a complete. <laughs> it was on a whim. Let's face yeah, it. Yeah, it was, it was just the case. He decided rockets. to program just like, you know what? Let's just fire the rockets just in case. I was in there anyway. <laughs> Thought me as well, and uh, and it worked because the rockets will just target whatever's closest. Yeah, um, and they take a couple of turns before they actually do their damage because they're slow moving things, uh, and it, it worked because it blew up a threat that was going to destroy us. Yeah, <laughs> and somehow, and Pavel just deciding to press the button for the shields, the the wrecked shields, I might add. <laughs> um, somehow managed to stave off enough of the damage that the other two huge ships were going to do to us. That we survived it. Yeah, yeah because just flew off. the final ship stopped one like one space short of yeah. firing. Its oh, yeah. executing its final which, 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 which would have killed us, but by sheer chance it decided it ran out of fuel or... <clears throat> No, 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 no. Well, it was because really 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 this is because <laughs> this is the jump you execute to, to fly away. <laughs> now, the way I see it, it, it was perfect calculation along with with uh, immaculate planning and execution. I think we were awesome. Well, let's give ourselves a pat on the back. Yeah, yeah I think we should for our excellent work in space. 
as a as a space cadet, I feel fully ready to <laughs> tackle game. this game. On uh, right. damn it, it's a different game. As a space alerter, I feel like we That's were nice. really amazing. Mm. Pavel, did you feel immersed in this game? Um, uh, the, there was there was some uh, some some shouting and the general um, role played pressing of various buttons. <laughs> um, there were threats thrown at imagined starships and maniacal laughter at the demise of my enemies. What, us? Well, no, no. You were collateral, collateral <laughs> damage. Now we understand how Pavel yeah. was playing the game. Pavel thought the weapon shot everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> go and go out the front of the ship so I can shoot you with this laser. The game is very much tongue-in-cheek. Uh, it's cartoony. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you, you know, you don't, you don't get immersed in the actual, let's say, lore of it. But because it's timed and because it's a very, very much... Uh, soul social interaction rather than just focusing on your own ideas uh you you do get immersed very much well it's 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 lucky i've not you know i might have just started waving my arms arms around and jumping which may have you nearly did may have done further damage <laughs> uh ewan what's your yeah. feelings on space alert I enjoyed it yeah i would um i would highly recommend it i think it's probably my favorite of those type of games actually having damage report was fun but it kind of was a bit I don't know, like, like a something I was looking slightly for. Slightly different thing, aye. But yeah, but, yeah. It's, 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 I'm, I'm making that sort of, I'm equating those games purely, the, sort of the theme is really this, what yeah, ties the theme, them yeah. together. But they do have all very different mechanics. But yeah, um, that's a lot of fun. Cool. And just highly stressful as well, <laughs> but if you if you can combine stress and fun, you're on to a winner. Dave, any thoughts on it? Yeah, it's a really good game. Uh I thought the uh, the random the random hands of action cards uh, is a really clever mechanic uh, because it means it's, it's different from other games where you can just take uh, set actions. Other cooperative games, yeah, so you have to be truly flexible in this game, and I think yeah. that's when we were at our best is when we were having to be like really fluid with the way we were planning things. Like Chris might have decided he was going to go and do something, uh, and then I would be like. You know, he was maybe looking like he was struggling a bit, and I was like, "Well, actually, I can go and do that thing that you were going to do, uh, and then that will free you up to go and do something else." So, yeah, really, it's, it's a truly cooperative game. Oh yeah, say. Uh, and you really, you really have to communicate. Like yeah. you really, really do. Yeah. It's, so, it's so important in this game. Yeah, people need to listen to the captain, Pavel. <laughs> <laughs> I was busy shouting. <laughs> Worst chief of security ever. There were threats to be thrown. <clears throat> okay, anyway, let's wrap that one up. So that is Space Alert by... Uh, Vlada... Somebody? Vlada Fatal. That's the one. Same. Well done, dude. <laughs> and that's uh, that's by Czech Games Edition, mm. who do a lot of good games. Um, and like I say, that came out in 2008. So I think uh, well, we've, we've got time to talk about uh, The Colonists... Yeah. So this was a game I picked up a couple of weeks ago, um, thinking to myself, you know what, I've not got enough really dry Euro games, so <laughs> so let's give this a go. Because um, I thought this one actually looked quite interesting. Uh, it's, it's got some slightly different things going on in it that I haven't really seen in games like this. In fact, Ewan, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you explain the colonists well, to us. Well, I mean... I don't. I want to. I don't want to get too bogged down in the actual rules or the mechanics of the game because they are numerous, yes, and uh, very kind of detailed. But essentially, it's a it's a combination, uh, and the the art style on the box is uh, reminiscent of the what's his name, Uwe, Uwe Rosenberg, yes, uh, games. So the the Harvest Trilogy, La Havre and Ag- Agricola, and all that. It is kind of reminiscent of. Agricola, just the sort of the way the game board is set up and everything like that. Um, you have a player board, which is your your colony, and you start off with a farm on it that has like a, a worker in it. And um, you have what is, what's that? It's two farms. Two farms. Yeah, yeah something like that. Um, and the you basically you're developing your game board with better buildings, um, more storage for res- resources that you need to build the buildings and sort of generating income and things like that. Uh, basically, whoever has the most valuable colony it's, at the end of the, the game. the most value, I think. Is yeah, the most value. It. Yeah, um, the most uh, capital. So you're including your money and like your 
basically your investments, all of your buildings and the value of the, the buildings you sort of add up. Um, you start off with, basically the way that you take actions in this game is where it gets quite interesting because you have, each player has a pawn that's the, now what does that represent again? They say, they say it in the, in the oh, rule book. Oh, uh, sure, it's a clerk or it's some kind of clerk. Yes, it's, I, uh, Basically, you're important, man. Yeah, you're you're look you're be blue important, man. <laughs> with his bowler hat, he uh, you you're going to be placing him on a market that's sort of two hexes. Yes, and then you draw a bunch of tiles, and they're, they're all hexes. They're, they're all hexes, and you lay those tiles out in a way that sort of they go from one market to another to to begin with. I think. They, Trying to explain this a bit. Yes. I, essentially, yes. I. But basically, what you're going to have is a lot of different hexes um, laid out in a in a in whatever fashion, and they are going to have various actions on them. And on your turn, you take uh, you move three times around those hexes, and you take the actions that are on them. And that is essentially the mechanic for building the game, uh, building your your colony. Uh, you you know your sort of action tiles at the beginning are quite basic. They'll be pick up resources of be wood wood and clay to begin with yeah. which are then maybe going to refine into boards uh, like planks from the wood and making bricks. Uh, bricks and things from the clay um, and there'll be there'll be action spaces that come out that let you do that um, there are certain rules with movement as well that you can't you can't go back to a hex you've already been on on that turn mm-hmm. well, um, so you, you can but you can't Go back to the hex you started on. All oh, right, oh, the, specifically the one. That specifically you the one you started. See, your there's a lot on. of very specific rules yes. in that. It's a yes. very. We'll get onto that, but um, yeah. So you essentially do that. You can you can essentially teleport to, to a market. You can go to any of the markets as a single movement, and there's there'll be market actions for each phase of the game. I think you draw one each. each it's, year. it's a new one every turn. Every turn, yeah. yeah. So and. The way that the game is played in terms of the phases you. Oh no, have. you're right. Sorry, you're right. It's every year. Every year. Because there's two turns in every year. Yeah. Yes. You'll have a. You'll track this on a little card. That's sort of, there'll be f- for five years for an era, and there's two two phases in each turn. So you'll move. Uh, so it's, it's I guess like winter. It's, you and, get ten turns summer, in an era, summer, basically. Yeah. yeah. And I for each year you'll have a different set of like market actions that you can take. Am I missing anything out there? No, I think I think you've got like the important things there. Yeah. But I mean, it's all about how it all kind of ties together. I mean, the game is—it's a brain burner. It definitely like, is. It's, because it's, I mean, this is this is an efficiency game. This is a game about what is the most efficient thing that you can do yeah. on a particular turn, and that's when you sit there and just stare at this like hexagon board. <laughs> this, well, this, it can, this that, table of hexagons in front of you. I mean, that can get quite frustrating because you can find that you know there there are actions that are just almost blocked off to you because yeah. of the what. You, I mean, I found that there was just one. Uh, you know, I. I had wood. I needed to get to a place, uh, or that, one of the actions that let me use that wood to build something. And there was a there's a a loggers thing as one of the actions in the way, which turns it into planks. Now, if you go on to a space, you have to take that action if you can do it. So, if you've got wood and you go onto that space, it's going to get turned into planks whether you like it or not. Yeah. Um, and it just that stopped me from getting to the thing that I needed with the food, wood. What I ended up, I think, having to do was go elsewhere, pick up more wood, so that I could cross that, let some of it become planks, and then still have the wood when I got to the other action. But I it, think it, that that was part of partly because of the way that we had set up the board. But we, we, but we had no idea randomly. what we were doing. Yeah, we were just chucking stuff down. Like we were just like you set up the board by just at like, the start of the game. You each draw a tile one after another yeah. and put it, put it down somewhere, and then you put the final market in. I mean, there's a potential for that to get really tactical. Oh yeah, we weren't we weren't thinking about that too much in our first playthrough, but with a lot of people playing, that could be really important. And the the other thing in terms of how the 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 sort of the actions these these hexes come out, the person responsible for putting them out at the start of when you get a new a new era or there's a new set of hexes is the person who has the first player token. And there's an action out from the start of the game that lets you take the first player token. I didn't do it at all. You basically were putting all the hexes out. I was like, I think it's like, I, I, you couldn't let that happen in a full game because no, you would be dominated so. completely. I mean, I, I was being really... Yeah, I mean, I, you, a lot of the time I was just putting them in random places yeah. because I didn't want to 
sit there because it was just the two of us playing nah. and I didn't want to sit there and just be like oh like try and figure try. out and like oh what does you really need what do I not need or whatever um, and I didn't want to sit and do that in our first sort of like what we'll play through because we only played like two eras yeah. um, out it, of the four it does sound like this is actually a fairly important stage of the game where you set yes. up your production lines or you can screw up somebody else's production yeah. lines yeah. Yeah? And, that's, and that's it but I, I didn't want to do that in our first right. game I, sure. I was being we were still getting a feel nice. for even how to play it to be honest so we, yeah, just, yeah. So we didn't know the significance of one Thing, some Aye. certain things being in other places, but you know, we didn't know how that. Was yeah, going to that, that the board looks overwhelming. I mean, every hex is different. But, so much information. Yeah, and I mean, it just gets bigger and bigger as the game goes through yeah. because every year you're putting out three new tiles, and then if you're playing like what thirty, what what would it be? Um, well, if you're sorry, playing like twenty years, if you play like 40, the Aye. forty rounds, and yes. Yeah, but you don't put any new ones out in the fifth year of every year of, oh, okay. um, but like, you, well, there you go. I mean, you're you're just throwing. There's still a lot, a of, lot of tiles right. onto that table by the time it's done. Yeah. Uh, I think the other thing that we what we need to say is that uh, your player board itself. There's a lot, there's sort of important thing that goes on with uh, there's that. There's a lot of management with. Your yeah, there's a, board. there's a lot of yeah, a lot of management there. Um, you you need to be able to store. Um, the goods that you have. Yeah. So you need to have storage sheds, and you need to be able to. So one of the things that. It's probably quite an important thing to do early in the game is to build more storage. Ah, your storage capacity is rubbish at the start. It's of the game, terrible. So, yeah. yeah, and you have to throw things away if you can't if you can't store it basically. Mm. Um, and the other thing is that you need to have workers as well. So it's not really a worker placement game. It's more just the fact that it's a worker management. It's game. a worker management. Yes, yeah. I've not seen anything like this in any other game. So you need to build. You start off with two farms. You can build more farms to get more farmers. You can set those farmers. They don't actually work on the farms themselves. If they're in the farm, they're doing nothing. Yeah. Um, but you can set them to work on, in order to make a storage shed work, for example, you need to have a farmer on it. Um, if you want to get some of your little production buildings, so you get buildings that will maybe produce a wood every year or whatever, or, or whatever clay or food, yeah. or, or a pub that will generate money ah. every year. And you need to have like a farmer on that. But then as you go through the game, you start to get into the set towards the second era or into the second era, you can upgrade your, um, your farms into flats and then your little green farmers actually become little yellow civilians basically yeah. um, and you can set them to work in the more powerful buildings but you then have to start paying them money farmers work for free uh, but the yellow guys pay, want money or, or f- uh, sorry I pay them in food because then there's a, there's um, a step up from that which we and there's a step up to. which we didn't get to aye uh, these red the, uh, so yeah they're I guess some kind of nobles I think they're uh, merchants aye and they would be running like factories and things like that or yeah. sort of, like the bigger um, the, the bigger more important buildings aye yeah. but I mean it's all about uh, having value like you say by the end of the game um, you need to have well you, you count up how much value you have but if you have buildings that have nobody working in them um, you don't get the you don't get the value for that in your points yeah. uh, and so having those high level buildings with those high level guys that are needed to to be in them basically if, you, if you've got the guys in them you'll get the points for them that's what you want to do yeah. but that's going to end up costing you more and more and more and more and more well working with I mean the way that you sort of manage with the workers that can get quite finicky as well with all the sort of you know, you can upgrade your farms so you can have three farmers out of yeah. one farm things like that so you can get more workers out Um and like you say, yeah, you have to make sure everything has got somebody working it, basically, yeah. or you know, take them off at certain times. So you're constantly having to rearrange this, uh, and there is like there's a bit at the end of each turn where you can, which is like your sort of production phase, I think, or just before that, you can move your workers about freely. But then there's again, there's certain rules as to what you know, yeah, what you can and can't do with them. Um, it's. I don't know. It's an odd game for. I, f- I feel like you. I feel. I feel when I was playing it, like I was kind of peering into the mind of someone that I was slightly terrified <laughs> by, because it is so. It is so, like, management oriented, like the kind of detail orientated. Yeah. There's so many little things, um, and that's like the reason why there's all these little kind of rules that you have to be aware of in terms of how you move and how you, how you do things. I mean, they all make the game work really well, but it's 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 taken an obsessive mind, a dedicated mind to create that. I, I think I agree with you there. Yeah. Right? Did you guys <laughs> manage to actually enjoy it? I actually quite yeah, enjoy it. See, because there's, there's a thing about these kind of games where um, I'm not that fussed about other people when I'm playing these games. I just like to build up my little thing and see how it gets on. Yeah. Like, that's how I play these games. I'm I, not that fussed about competing. 
This is a, and this is a good sort of version of that style of thing because it is very much you have your re- you're building your colony. Yeah. It's all coming up in front of you, and you can kind of keep track of what your Aye. how good it is. And and there's one thing like I think. See, I'm not sure that I would enjoy playing this as much with more people. I actually think that as a two-player game, this worked quite well. Yeah. Um, it's and I think nice casual game. And it was it was casual. We just kind of chilled out. We sat and played it for a few hours and sort of Sunday afternoon yeah. or whatever it was. And I actually I reasonably enjoyed just building up a little thing. And then us comparing our things to each other. You had pubs that was generating money, Aye. which was putting you in the lead. But like I had loads of the little yellow guys working in various places and stuff. So we we, we kind of had slightly different strategies, and it was good to sort of like compare that and see how they were working. But I I mean I think. Because I, I I get the feeling that if I was to play this with three or four people that were taking it seriously, I w- it would be a twelve hour game that I would just by the end of it want to hang myself. Uh, I think yeah, you have to kind of know what you're letting yourself in for. But that's sort the of thing. I, I, most of what we play with aren't going to go Aye. too overboard with that. But there, there, you know, there is an element and there is a chance for competition. It's not just purely yeah. Um, you're you know there are certain restrictions as well. Uh, the thing I mentioned earlier about the if you've got your pawn on a specific action, if somebody wants to move on and use that action, they have to pay you. Yeah. There's things like that, so you can kind of just like camp out and some, you know, something. Even if you know somebody wants something, um, there's definitely like trolling opportunities. <laughs> but it, it, but like you see, it works just as well as almost like what, what was you just you used the term Dave? Was it was multiplayer solitaire. Or multiplayer something solitaire, like that? yeah. Where you, know, you can time. just be very absorbed in what you're doing, which is fine. You know, those games can be quite enjoyable sometimes. But yeah, it's a it's a good example of the the genre. I am, I actually I do want to actually play it again. Yeah, well, um, and actually just sit and maybe even try and get through all the eras. Uh, but like I say, I think you'd I'd be need to, to have, after. Like, I'd need to have the right it. group of people for yeah. it. Like I just don't think I could sit and deal with all the analysis paralysis. I but it's, it, the other thing about it as well is it's not one for. I mean, we we said this the other day. Uh, it's like this is a. This is one for the connoisseurs. Yes, you're not. Aye. This is not like if this is the first board game you ever pick up of its type. Where you go, oh, I've heard these Euro games are good, yeah. and you pick up. You're you're probably never going to pick up another board game yeah, in your aye, life. Aye. <laughs> Just, uh, not for beginners. Yeah. Not Build for up beginners. to it. Um, as as casual as it can feel playing it, it, it does. Uh, there's a lot of brain burn, and it's it just has things that really only seasoned board gamers are going to understand why. Certain things are happening. You're going to you understand how sort of general mechanics are, are formed, and yeah. yeah, just like Puerto Rico. Start with Puerto Rico. I started with Puerto Rico, and look at me now <laughs> doing a podcast with you. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> uh, right, okay, quickly, Pavel. Does this look the kind of game that you would enjoy? Um, I'm gonna say I. <sighs> I, just say no. I do, I do no. <laughs> I do like um, economy building games, but I do like. <laughs> but this looks a bit much. The, the, yeah, well, <laughs> I'd probably obsess You're... about it a bit and get lost yeah. in the middle of it. Uh, I do like my my themes quite uh, quite a lot, and if if a game doesn't really support even a little bit of theme, if it's just mechanics and mathematics. At some point, I'm probably a bit less invested in it than I could otherwise. Yeah. This one probably does like err on the slightly more. Yeah. Is, it's less is, is there a, a theme for it? Like, are you settling anywhere in particular? I don't. You, it's not. Doesn't it's it's Are you wiping loose. out it's indigenous populace? Uh, well, that's the thing. See, I think that like when when people make these kind of colonization games sort of thing, they're a bit more careful about the theming of them yeah. because Puerto Rico gets a lot of stick mm. for. And quite rightly so. <laughs> well, you know what? They're maybe not whitewashing the, the whitewashing the past in the way some of these other games are. So you know, maybe maybe that's to their credit. You just pretend you're in space, Pablo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Space colonists. See, I've never played SimCity as such because it was just boring. Uh, let's make a city. But if I play Anno two two o five, that's. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's again. That's a that's a city builder, but uh, futuristic, which is cool. Um, so, so you didn't play Sim City two thousand in the nineties because oh, that was fu- that's futuristic two thousand. Yeah, they were, talking, they were talking about what was going to happen in two thousand, right. and they were right. <laughs> well, right we're going to have to we're going to have to wrap this up now. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so that was the colonists. That's by uh, designer is Tim Pools. Um, it's by Mayfair Games and it came out last year in 2016. And as soon as you guys said it's dry, I had a feeling it wouldn't be my kind of game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that has been Landmark episode 50. Yeah. 
Well done, guys. Thanks. Well done, Dave. Yeah. Mm. Cheers, cheers for co- coming coming along. I'm glad and, yeah. I could be on the landmark 50th episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and now we've just stopped forever. I think we've reached. <laughs> nah, we've let's, reached let's relentlessly go on. Well, we still need another cake. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Pavel needs to get us more cake. Uh, anyway, bef- <laughs> before that, let's uh, let's give out our internet stuff. Um, you can email us with any comments, questions, etc. Um, that's firstplayertoken at gmail.com, F-I-R-S-T player token. Uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Uh, they're all first player token or well, the large and unnecessary first player token to be more accurate. Um, Twitter is at one st player token. This is once the player token. If you're Thank confused. you, Ewan. Uh, we have a Discord. You can ask us for that. Our website is firstplayertoken.com. Uh, my Twitch username is unnecessary. Chris, we stream board games on that sometimes, and I not as often as I used to, but stream video games. Mm. I hope to get back into that sometime soon. Um, and we are part of the Podnos Network, the UK's leading entertainment podcast network. Really getting that Man, one down. It's just Smooth. getting more and more beautiful. Yeah, I practice in the mirror every night. <laughs> Please accept me, Podnos. So, uh, Podnos is a network of podcasts and a variety of topics which we are part of. So, go and yeah. check that out if you're looking for something else to listen to. Just uh, sick of us. We will be back next week with episode 51, which will be a video games episode. Um, we've got a few things to talk about, Pavel. You're oh, still yeah. depressed about Mass Effect? It's, um, I'm trying to soldier through it. <laughs> still soldiering on. Uh. <laughs> okay, so we will see you then. Bye. 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 <laughs>